chapter 22. We started in this message last Sunday and did not did not get to where we wanted to and still don't know if we will, but we're going we're gonna to start at it again. And here David, if you want to read a parallel scripture to this, look at Psalms chapter number 18. And you'll find the parallel uh, scripture to this that is uh, certainly like 2 Samuel chapter number 22 because this is a psalm uh, written of by David. And David is giving the Lord praise that he has been delivered from his enemies. And he says in verse number 5, or verse number 4, he said, I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. When the waves of death compassed me, the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about, and the snares of death prevented me. The psalmist says very encouraging words in verse number 7. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried to my God, and he did hear, me, hear my voice out of his temple, and my cry did enter into his ears. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word of God this morning. Blessed, I pray. God, help us to rightly divide the word of truth, and God, give us bread from heaven. Father, we need something to eat, Lord, to feed our souls today. God, we need something that will help us. God, in this world that we live in, God, we need something that will help us today. And I pray, God, you would do that. God, give us that which we need. I pray we rebuke the devil from around us. May all that we say be to the glory of God. In Jesus' name, amen. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. And friend, there's been distressful days of our lives. Many here are young, many are older. And you that are older have experienced more distressful days. You that are younger have not yet experienced many of those, but you will. But you've got to remember that in my distress I called upon the Lord and God heard me out of his holy temple. And read it on a little bit more. God, was, God became angry because of those that had attacked David. And these verses here explain that. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of heaven moved and shook because he was wroth. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down. And darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub and did fly. And he was seen upon the wings of the wind. And he made darkness pavilions round about him, dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. Through the brightness before him were coals of fire kindled. The Lord thundered from heaven, the Most High uttered his voice. And he sent out arrows and scattered them, lightning and discomfited them. And the channels of the sea appeared, the foundations of the world were discovered. At the rebuking of the Lord, at the blast of his breath of his nostrils, he sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them that hated me, for they were too strong for me. Now we see here that when we're in distress and cry up unto the Lord, when our enemy attacks us, when the devil attacks us, and when those uh, infidels of this world and those God-haters of this world attack us, we know that God is going to deliver us. We know that God is going to help us and did you know, I believe that it angers God when those attack, uh, those of the world attack his people. When those of the world attack those that are his, it, it angers God. When someone used to, uh, you know, when I, my children were growing up and even now, if someone uh, attacks my young ones, attacks my children, it angers me, it makes me mad. And I believe so the, with the Lord when, he, when someone attacks us, I believe that it angers God. And I believe God will help, and I believe God will, will do things in our lives and help us when we're in distress and when the world is attacking us. Now, you all know I don't have to, I don't have to go into uh, to, to much detail, and I won't about all the mess that went on uptown. I didn't think I was going to mention it, but right now is a good time to mention it. All the mess that went on uptown uh, this past week, and it's all of the devil, it's all of hell. And I, I'm not sure to cone that one little bit because I believe it's an abomination to God. And I'm not going to give it any time or dignity with telling you a bunch of it. But there was one thing that I got involved in with it that, uh, that just shows me the mindset of people and how they hate believers. 
Now listen, friend, if you're going to live for Christ, you expect to be hated. You expect to be hated. You expect to be persecuted. And uh, I, there was a, a fellow on, that, on Facebook, he, he posted, he was one of the former city councilmen, and he posted a big long thing. Some of you might have saw it. Well, way down there was a hundred and something, you know, and I read some of those, and I was sickened by the, by the uh, uh, words that I was reading uh, concerning what the former city councilman came out against. He came out against it. And I began to read that, and I, I went on down, and, well, you know me, I took about as much as I could, and I left my own comment. And it's simply what the Bible says. I mean, I didn't quote a Bible verse. I didn't do, I, I, I was just being a Christian about the whole thing. And it wasn't five minutes later, some ungodly, God-denying, God-hating somebody came on there and just, I mean, just perversely uh, lambasted me and told me that I was going to be in hell and that I was going to hell. He hated that. I mean, who could tell? If I'd have been near him, I believed that he would gnash upon me with his teeth if he could. Friend, you and I are living in a dangerous, terrible world. And, you know, of course, that uh, several people agreed with what I said. But I'm just telling you what kind of world that we live in. We live in a world of hate, and we live in a world where people are going to come against the child of God. But when you're in distress and when you're being lambasted by the enemy, remember, call upon God in your time of trouble, and he will heal you out of his holy temple. <coughs> now, as we read on here, Verse 21, the Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands hath he recompensed me. If you want the blessing of God in your life, then you must live clean before God. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me and his statutes I did not depart from them. David's saying, I am trying to live for God. I am trying to do the will of God. I am trying to follow him and follow his statutes. Now, we know that David didn't all the time do that. We see some great wickedness even in David's life. But when he was in distress and when he fell out into sin, what did he do? He called upon the Lord. Just as this illustrates down here, we're going to mess up once in a while, but if we call on God, he'll hear us out of his mighty temple. He'll hear us out of his holy temple and he will come to us, he will rescue us and he will forgive us of sin. For all the judgments were before me and as for his statutes, I did not depart from them. I was also upright before him and have kept myself from mine iniquity. Therefore the Lord hath recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to my cleanness in his eyesight. With the merciful thou wilt show thyself merciful, and with the upright man thou wilt show thyself upright. With the pure thou wilt show thyself pure, and with the froward thou wilt show thyself unsavory. And the afflicted people thou wilt save, but thine eyes are upon the haughty that thou mayest bring them down. One day this haughty bunch, one day this haughty crowd, one day these that will will flaunt their sin before a almighty God will stand before God. And when they stand before God upon that day, God will judge them according to their sin. Now I'm against sin. I you know I believe preachers don't preach enough against sin. I believe we don't name sin like we should. And and people say, well let's just get along. Well we get along all right. But listen, if I don't condemn sin, then I'm not a good preacher. Amen. I, I, I'll tell myself that. If I don't condemn sin, then I'm not doing you any good service. And friend, we condemn sin. We condemn what is wrong in this world. And when we do that, then those, there are those that's going to rise up against us. But their day's coming. Their day's coming. Now, as verse 29, For thou art a lamp, O Lord, and the, and the Lord will lighten my darkness. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. Now that's who God is. Yeah, listen, we have the strongest father that has ever been known. We have the greatest God that man could ever know. Even though men by the, by the millions, by the untold millions, worship other gods, we have the only God. 
And what, is, what makes people so angry when you say something against their sin? And right now we're talking about the sin of sodomy. When you say something against that and tell them you're right, that even infuriates them the more. But friend, God's right, every man's a liar. God's word is true and every man's a liar. But it goes for the same for drunkenness, for, for any kind of wickedness that you can think of, for, for drugs, alcohol, whatever you can think of that's wrong, impure thoughts, pornography, whatever you can think of that's wrong, the sin against God, God's against it. When David, he said they were coming against me, I was in my distress, and, and, and these things were coming against me, but I called upon the Lord, and he, he said, God heard me, God answered me, and here's the verse I want to get to this morning and preach to you just a little while. For who is God? Save the Lord. Who is a rock? Save our God. God is my strength and power. He maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet and setteth me upon my high places. Who is God? You ever stop and think, who is God? Now just who is he? Who is this God that that, that preacher preaches about every Sunday? Who is this God that, that uh, the world seems to hate and seems to try their best to destroy as they have from the beginning of time, those that have been, have the devil's been against God and he's tried to destroy him or destroy his followers. Who is this God? Oh, friend, let me tell you who he is this morning. We know that God's God and beside him there is none else. We know that God's God and there's nobody else like him. In heaven or in earth, there is nobody like unto God. This is the God that, number one, this is the God that stands in heaven and all the occupants of heaven give him praise. I can I can only imagine in my mind what it must be like to be if I were if I were to go to heaven right now and look at that heavenly scene around the throne of God and untold untold countless army of people around him an army of beings around him continually giving him praise for who he is who is this God he's the God that all of heaven and his occupants will eternally give him praise Friend, one day you and I are going to bow before a holy God. You and I are going to bow before Him when we get to heaven and we're going to give Him praise. We should do it now. We should be the first to give God praise in this earth as those born again believers. But there's coming a day when you and I, our eyes will behold Jesus face to face. And when we see Him, friend, what a day of... Listen, it'll take, a, it'll take glorified bodies for us to be able to give Him the praise that He deserves. And for all eternity, you and I will give Him praise. That's who this God is. If God were to come to earth today, if God were to step foot on earth today, many would not acknowledge Him. But those, friend, that saw Him and know who He is will, will praise Him, will give Him glory, will voice their praise to the Lord. If, if God, which we know God's everywhere, but if God showed up in the depths of hell, in the pit of hell, if God showed up, everyone that had went to hell would bow and say, this is God, and give him the praise and give him the glory. And I'll tell you today, my friend, one day every knee shall bow and give God the praise and give God the glory. Who is this God? He's the God that deserves and one day will get the praise of everyone that's ever been born on planet Earth. Now, you, you know, you do a little study on your own about, about people. You know, I, I'm just, and I shouldn't be. I know I shouldn't be amazed or I shouldn't, I, I shouldn't uh, think this is something new or uncommon. But every day I'm a little bit more amazed at the wickedness of man. I'm a little bit more amazed at how much sin man can contrive and conceive in their heart to do. You know, we've, hit, we've heard that here recently of beheadings. We've heard of... Of, of many wicked, evil things going on in the world. You know what's going to happen to one of those people one of these days? Let me tell you. First of all, if they don't accept Jesus, and believe me, Jesus loves them as much as he does me. He died for them just as much as he He said, Jesus couldn't have died. No, oh, yes, he did. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Friend, last time I looked up the word whosoever, that means what it said, whosoever. And even those that deny him, and even those that kill believers for, for teaching about Christ, God loves them. And friend, this world of wickedness, this world of evil, and all that can go on in this world, 
One day, those evil, wicked people will bow before God and give Him praise and give Him glory. Oh, my friend, today, the world we're living in, there is a God, amen, that I serve and a God that I know and a God that loves me. Who is this God? He's the God that deserves our praise. Everybody say amen. amen. Now everybody say amen like you're praising God. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God deserves our praise. Who is this God? He is a God that, that when, when uh, all see him, all must acknowledge that he is God. Every believer today, if it's true in your heart that you're saved by the grace of God, if you're here sitting this morning and you're a child of God today, it is in your heart. And you can say there's nobody like him. Where would you be if it wasn't for the Lord? Everybody stop and be real quiet just for a minute and think. Where would I be today if I hadn't been saved by the grace of God? Friend, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here. I don't even know if I'd be alive today if it wasn't for salvation. I, I, you know, I'd, I'm not even sure that I'd be alive today if it wasn't for the saving grace of God. God loves me. God loves you. And friend, you and I ought to be the first to, to say praise the Lord when God does something good for us. Preacher, I, I'm afraid to praise the Lord. I'm not anymore. Man, I, was down, I went down to that conference. All right, I quit putting on pretense. I was deer hunting, okay? But I went down there and we invited some folks over from uh, one of the landowners over for, for supper. And he's, you know, he, he owns a lot of land and we lease some of the land from him or the club does. And, uh, and we invited him over to have supper with us one night. And while we were inviting him, he called us back and said, well, can I bring a forest ranger with us? You know, this guy's been, he, he's a, a, a biologist and, can I bring him with us, you know, and, and, uh, and I'm thinking, here I am. I'm the only one that's trying to live and serve the Lord, and I'm the cook, okay? Don't worry, everybody's still alive. Nobody got sick. But, I, but the first thing, the first thing, the old devil said, now what are you going to do when it comes time to eat? I didn't give it a second thought. Well, I got the food fixed, and we, we made a mistake and mashed potatoes and green beans and, and uh, cooked some carrots and had some bread, and we had a good meal. And... Uh, I said, all right, fellas, come on, it's, it's time to eat. And they all got around there, and I said, now let's pray. And I prayed and asked God's blessings on the food. That's exactly how we should be around. And, and you know what? It wasn't many years past that I'd have been a little timid and a little nervous to do that. But I'm telling you what, friend, if we've ever stood for the Lord, who is this God? Who is your God? He's worth standing for. Amen. Amen. He's worth giving glory. He's worth giving praise. I don't know about them fellas. I, I, you know, I don't know if they're lost or saved. I don't know. But it, listen, if they're lost, maybe, maybe they saw that there's somebody that wants to serve the Lord. Or friend, I tell you what today, I'm telling you, we need to stand for this God of heaven. Who is this God? He's worthy of our praise and he's worthy of our devotion to him. Don't be afraid. I'm afraid of what somebody will say. Hey, what's the worst they can do? Old fellow said one time, we was at work, and he, they'd been all over him about something he'd done at work. He turned around and looked at him. He said, well, he said, they can't take away my birthday. <laughs> that was his response. And I've thought about that much. Listen, the world can do a lot of things, you say, but the world can kill me for my faith. But he can't take away my birthday in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm saved, thank God, by the grace of God. And no matter what this world does, I'm going to be with Jesus one of these days. Amen. And friend, if you've got Jesus in your heart, if you're saved by the grace of God, one day you're going to be with him. You've got a limited amount of years in this world to serve the Lord. And we should use that for the glory of God. Use our days to serve God because we're going to be with him for eternity. When I was a kid, which ain't been a few years ago, by the way, <laughs> and uh, Daddy would go off to work and he might say, how about I cut the grass before I come home? 
Now, if I was smart, which I wasn't most of the time, there was fishing to be done, or there was, there was squirrel hunting to be done, or there was ginseng to be dug. You know, there was all kinds of things to do, and in the very back of my mind was kept gray. So I'd get busy in my day, and I might go fishing, or I might just loaf, whatever it was. But I'd remember about the last of the day to cut the grass before Daddy got home. I'd get it done. But I'd waited and I'd wasted the whole day to, to do what I had to do and what I should have done first. I wasted the whole day. I got it done, but I did it right at the very last. Friend, our lives sometimes are like that. God wants, you know what God wants you to do. Who is this God? He's a God that wants you to serve Him. And we need to give Him the best of our lives. We don't need to hurry at the last of our lives and say, God, whatever you can do with me, do it now. No, we need to go. Listen, I want the last days of my preaching to be the best days of my preaching. Amen. I want the last days of my life to be the, last, the best days of my life. I want to, listen, I'll be the first to tell you, I, sometimes I've been slack, sometimes I've not served God like I should, but from here on out, amen, I want to do what I can for the glory of God. Young people, you here today, listen, don't wait till you're 50 years old to serve the Lord, amen. Serve Him now while you're young. Serve Him now while you've got time. There's no telling what God would do with young one young boy, one young young girl that will give their heart and life to Jesus and they will stand up and say I'm going to serve God in spite of my friends, in spite of my enemies, I'm going to serve God start now, start early start young I know you, I know. there's a lot of peer pressure out there, I know there's a lot of pressure from, from lost people to, to follow the ways of the world and do the things that the world does, but I want to tell you from experience, you listen to this preacher this morning, that you'll be much happier if you'll stay with God. You'll be much happier if you'll serve the Lord, and you won't get into things that you shouldn't get into if you're serving the Lord. It's impossible to get into sin when you're close to Jesus. Amen. It's impossible when God's leading your life and you're walking after the Spirit of God. It's impossible to get into sin. You know, when I get into sin, when I get away from God, when I get into things I shouldn't, it's when I got away from God. And friend, I'll tell you today, this, who is this God? He's a God that'll keep you in these days that we live in. He's a God that's worthy of our praise. If you get up and praise Him, God in heaven will help you to live for Him. Who is this God? This God is Elohim. The Bible, the Bible says God and uses the word Elohim. He, meaning He is the most omnipotent one, the most powerful one. Who is this God? He's the omnipotent. That's a big long word, ain't it? Omnipotent, which means all power. And who is this God? He's the omnipotent one. He's the one that's got the power. This bunch running around the world today saying, boy, we can do this, we can do that. They can do nothing unless God give them the power to do it. And I'll tell you what, my friend, the God of heaven is not sitting up there twiddling his thumbs wondering what's going on. He sees what's going on in this world. And one day the God of all power is going to straighten this mess out. Amen. But guess what? The God of all power, the omnipotent God is my God. The God, the all-powerful God is the one that lives in my heart. And let me tell you, my friend, today, God in heaven, if he lives in your heart, will help you do whatever you need to do to walk in this world. Everybody bow your head just a minute. How many of you here this past week, the old devil's come and said, why don't you just quit and give up on God? All about what I thought. I'm right where all right, you can look up. Listen, don't listen to the devil. He'll tell you that, but remember, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. And when the devil says quit, you say, God is my helper. I will not quit. Amen. I will go on. I will press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ. I'm glad y'all sitting on this front seat. It is a spit zone, so if I get too close. I tickled death to see somebody else sitting up there, but I was just reminded that I'll back off just a little bit. Amen. Listen to me. God in heaven is the all-powerful God. And when he says quit, amen, you, when the devil says quit, you say, by the help of God, I'm going on. Amen. 
dig in a little deeper. He is the omnipotent God. We don't have to bow to the pressures of this world. We don't have to bow to the sin of this world because God in heaven, the all-powerful, omnipotent God, is our God. Who is this God? He's Elohim. He's the omnipotent one. If you look into the heavens, you see the Creator. We cut a big oak tree. Well, I did. My, somebody else cut a big oak tree in my front yard. Long story short, it was my wife's idea. But it's my job. You know how that is, men. And uh, cut that big old oak tree down. It's twice as big as this pulpit. It's a big old thing. And uh, I have, for 20-something years, that tree has been in our yard, and it's got bigger every year. And I've read, I've raked billions of leaves off of that thing. And, and uh, uh, it's not, I don't have to do that this year. But guess what happened when I cut that tree down? Well, you guessed it. My yard's still a mess because it happened. Don't ever do stuff like that, men, right before deer season, okay? I mean, just don't do it because it's going to be there until wintertime. But I got plenty of wood for the winter and the next. But what happened when I cut that tree down? I sat and I walked out the other day, the other night with the dog, and I looked up where that tree was at out of habit. And guess what? I seen the star. Now, I ain't been much around the house where I could see many stars because that big tree, and there's woods all around me. But I thought, what about that? I'm looking at something that I used to have to walk down the road to see. But right there, it's been all the time. Hallelujah. Amen. The God of heaven created what I was looking at. And there's a little dipper. And I thought, God, you know, why did you put that little dipper there the way you did? You ever wonder things like that? Only people like me would. But why did you align those stars so that the people would look at that and call that the little dipper or the big dipper or the big back? Or why did you do that, God? I don't know, but God the Creator did it, amen, so that I could look up at it and see there is a God in heaven, amen. And all these nuts and basket cases out here that ain't got nothing but a noodle for a brain will tell me I tried to add I came from an amoeba, which is just a baby tadpole. And they tell me I come from that, and I finally wound up into a monkey, and now I'm walking upright. I may act like one, but I never come from a monkey. Amen. <laughs> My God, the omnipotent God, I look into the heavens and see the power of God and see that he is my God, the omnipotent creator of the universe and of man. And he, friend, listen, he knows what he created. He knew what he was going to be, and he knows how to control it all, and one day he's going to fix it all. Amen. I like that. Amen. I get excited when I think about the all power of God because that lets me know that this world, friend, is nothing compared to who God is. Number three. I'm about through. Number three, this God is the, here's another big word for you, omniscient one. Amen. Omniscient one. Omni means all, and that sheep bark means sign. So God is the all-knowing God. He knows everything. Hey, God in heaven knows we're having service this morning at Gable Creek. Amen. God, listen, who did I say? God knows that we're having service. And God said, they're having service down there, and I'm going to get right in the middle of them. Hallelujah to God. Amen. He's the omniscient God. He knows what's going on. There is not a molecule or an atom in this earth that God don't know about. There's not a hair on my head, and I still got some of it. Amen. There's not a hair on my head that God don't know what its number is and which one fell out like. Some of you don't take as much time for him to figure that out. <laughs> You'll get that after a while. Don't get mad at me. Mine all, my may all fall out tonight. I don't know. But God, listen, that's the kind of God that I have. He's an all-knowing God. He knew what was on your mind you went to bed last night. He knew what you had for supper last night or what you had or didn't have for breakfast this morning. Along with the untold billions of people on earth, God knows everyone. He knows every leaf that falls from the tree. You say you're preaching fools. No, 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 no. He, listen, he's the all-knowing God. What does all-knowing mean? Means he knows all. There's this knothead on TV that my wife likes. Well, I don't like him. I think it's an American boo myself. But my wife, what's the name of that? The Chase. This dude up there thinks he knows everything. Somebody trips him up once in a while. But listen, he, he sits up there and he'll ask him questions. Oh, y'all and everybody ought to know this. Makes me want to walk up and poke him in the nose. <laughs> Our 
arrogance. I mean, arrogance just, just irritates me. Arrogance does. He's an arrogant dude. And, and I, you know, I watch him, and he thinks he knows everything. But listen, he don't know nothing compared to what my God knows. Amen. Oh, who is this God? He's the omniscient God. He's the one. Listen, he knows what you did last night. He knows where you went last week. He knows what you turned on on the TV. He knows what you looked up on your computer. God in heaven is the all-knowing God, friend. And every time you start to do something, the devil starts to tempt you to do something that's wrong. You remember, God's watching you. There's this fellow went in. <laughs> this fellow went in and robbed his house. And he went in to rob his house, and there was a parakeet or a, or a parrot sitting on the perch. And he walked in the door, and the parrot said, Jesus is watching you. <laughs> he looked around. He didn't know why. So he went, and he started loading up his bag and rummaging through, and Hey, he was getting handguns out of the man's safe. He broke into the safe and was getting handguns and long guns. That upset me bad. And he went in and got some silverware. And par par every once in a while, that bird would say, Jesus is watching you. And he'd look around. Well, he got a that bird said that four or five times. And on his way out the door, he said, Jesus is watching you. Get him, Jesus. And a big old Doberman pizza come out of the closet named Jesus and tore him up. Now listen, I said, all, I said that and made that little funny to tell you this. The real Jesus is watching you. And no matter, listen, it might, it might do us all good to get a little parrot that repeat that and set it on our shoulder just to remind us Jesus is watching you. But we don't need that because we got the Holy Spirit of God inside of us and he tells us, we, we might not always consciously think that Christ is watching us, that Jesus is watching us, but when we do something we ain't supposed to do, Holy Spirit of God in there says you shouldn't have done that. That reminds me Jesus is watching me. And you know, brother, sometimes we'll do it anyway in spite of that. Is that not right? Sometimes we know we're doing wrong, we'll do it anyway. Am I treading on anybody's toes but mine? Am I getting the message to anybody but me today? Sometimes I knowingly do something I shouldn't do and have to repent, but God's a merciful God. Amen. And listen, if I continue to do that, God wear me out. And if God don't wear me out, then I'm not his child. Oh, my friend today, when you do wrong, does God remind you of it? Listen, he's the omniscient God. He knows all. Then number four, here's another big word for you. He's the omnipresent God. What does omni mean? All. What does present mean? You understand that pretty easy, don't you? He's all present. Amen. He's omnipresent. He's the all present God. He's everywhere. If you look into the heavens, you see God there. If you look out at these beautiful trees that's fixed to turn color, some of them already have, you look and see God's paintbrush. Hey, he's painting the mountains with a beauty. He's got, listen, it's God. If you'll just look for him, you'll see God everywhere. But preacher, what about the dark places of the earth? Is there God there? God's there. He's everywhere. Preacher, what about over there where they're having all the trouble? What about downtown Asheville? Is God there? God's everywhere. He knows what's going on. Now, there is a time, and I'm afraid this has happened in many churches, but there is a time when God says, I'm not having any more to do with them people. And he writes Ichabod above that place, and God won't be there no more. Unless you take him in your heart, God won't be there no more. I've been in churches where I'm sure God has written, written Ichabod above their door because it's dead and lifeless in that place. And the only time there when God's there is when somebody saved is in there. But God, the presence, the, the Shekinah glory of God does not fill those places anymore. I know a church in, in, uh, over in Tennessee that used to be a firehouse for God. 
All over the southeast, people would flock there to Bible conferences and to, and to hear the, the good preaching of the Word of God, such as Dr. Seitler and many others, and they would go there to hear them preach. And now the church is no more because they got away from God. It's, it's gone. It's not there. They're taking a new approach and moving to a different location and taking away the Baptist off of it. Listen, God has left. He's no longer there, and the church is gone. God is omnipresent, friend. He's with you. He's there. But we don't want to do anything to quench the Spirit of God that He might leave us alone. You know who the most important person here today is? It's not me. I'm not. I'm, I'm the least. You know who the most important person here today is? The Holy Spirit of God. He is the most important. There's no more any more important. I can't do what the Holy Spirit of God can do. He's preeminent. He's God. And He's omnipresent. And friend, He comes to us in the Spirit by the form of the Spirit of God into our services. He's the most important. Listen, I don't ever want to quench the Spirit of God. Terrible thing to quench the Spirit. Oh, my friend today, do you know Him? He's omnipresent. He's everywhere all the time. If you look on the earth, God's there. You look into the heart of man that's been saved, you'll find God there. And you'll find him wanting to get into the hearts of the wickedest of the earth. God's wanting to get there if they'll call upon him. He's the omnipresent God. There is nobody like him. I'll leave you with this verse. Psalms 86, verse 8. Among the gods there is none like unto thee. O Lord, neither are there any works like unto thy works. Among the gods, there is none like thee. Father, we thank you for the word of God this morning. Blessed, I pray. God, who is this God? We know, Father, that you're God from the beginning. Lord, that we know it to the end that we know it. And Lord, forever before and forever after, God, we know you're God. Father, help us to live like, we, like you live in our heart. Lord, help us to walk like you're with us every day. God, help us to walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh. God, if there's someone here that don't know you today, touch them, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen.